the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Not everyone is interested in politics. And the truth is, although it might sound terrible to say so this week particularly, not everyone needs to be. Don't get me wrong, there's plenty of reason for prayer, fervent prayer concerning what's going on in our nation and in our world. And the right to vote, to be involved so directly in choosing our leaders, that's one that we ought not take for granted. But being preoccupied or tormented by parties, platforms, campaigns, strategies, dysfunctions, and the rest of it, letting those things dominate our moments and our interactions, making them the topic of every conversation and the point of every post, seeing every election as an apocalyptic showdown and demanding that others do the same, that's, that's just not an obligation for every citizen, let alone every person. Likewise, not everyone needs to be interested in science or literature or art, although it's great and important that people have those passions. Not everyone needs to be interested in pop culture, in the fashions and the music and the movies and the so forth. Those who decide what's news for us and those who control how we get our entertainment, they can give us the impression that it's a moral duty to share their fixations and to agree, to agree with their positions, but it's not so. People don't have to be, they shouldn't have to be interested in the same things in order to be part of the same community. Yet having said that, I'm going to go on to say this. There is one thing, there is one thing that everyone, every human being should be interested in. Indeed, that everyone has an interest in, whether they know it or not, whether they care about it or not, because it's the one thing that every human being was made for. And that is to be a saint. Today is All Saints Day, the day that All Saints Eve, All Hallows Eden, is intended to usher in. All Saints is sometimes thought of as a kind of fishing net spread out near the end of the year to catch the saints who don't have their own special days in the liturgical calendar. The ones who would otherwise slip away without our having the opportunity to learn their names and their stories. And to be sure, there's nothing wrong with that. But the very terminology, all saints, and the scriptures appointed for today, the vision in Revelation chapter 7 of a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, and the beginning of the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew chapter 5, directed to the gathered crowd of Jesus' disciples, every one of them, those might well open us to a deeper and wider meaning of all saints. The folks who watched the Luther movie yesterday may remember Martin's protest to the crowds, fanboying and fangirling him as he arrived in Worms. I'm no saint. But that, I think, is movie maker's license. Yes, it's possible, and it's happened in history, that the notion of sainthood has been caricatured and distorted and abused. Yet following the lead of our readings, we might nevertheless realize that the saints, the holy, the set apart for God's purposes, include Martin Luther, and they include us. Flaky sinners, though we are. Distracted and deceived by the devil, though we are. Drastically isolated and distanced from one another, though we are. Radically uncertain and anxious about the future, though we are. All saints includes us, because to believe and to follow Jesus, to be baptized in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, is to be given a new identity and a new calling, as one might be provided with a complete and completely new outfit to put on for a wedding or a ball. But oddly enough, the identity and the calling for which we were designed in the first place. All saints includes us, because whatever else we might be interested in and fascinated by, holiness, sanctification, is the great project, the fundamental enterprise that gives our lives and our society shape, direction, and for that matter, the real basis for any healthy politics and science and culture. All saints includes us, because even the heroes 
past and present of faith and service and obedience, the awe-inspiring roll call of the spiritually extraordinary leaders and teachers and martyrs, even they, according to the book of Hebrews, even they will not reach their fulfillment. They will not be made perfect as promised apart from us. Hebrews chapter 11. So when we speak of all saints, for example, when we sing, as we did earlier, for all the saints who from their labors rest, or when we sing, as we will soon, these are the saints who kept God's word, they are the honored of the Lord. Or when we sing, as we will in closing, for all your saints, O Lord, who strove in you to live. When we speak of all saints, we're speaking, yes, we're speaking of the many faithful of the past who lived and died with integrity, who entrusted themselves to Christ in good times and in bad who committed great sins and who received great forgiveness in order that, that may, they might bear witness to great mercy, whose names our calendar might not remember, but that God will not forget. All of that, yes. But precisely in speaking of them, we're all speaking also of a community, a communion, a communion of saints in which it's been given to us to share. We're speaking of the cast of an enormous drama that's conscripted us out from the audience into the performance. We're speaking of that huge net of often anonymous fish, which has captured us as well. That might sound exciting. It should have sound exciting because it is. But, but, when we come back from our first excited glance, when we settle in after our first excited whiff, this realization that we too are part of all saints, that we too are members of this strange communion, it might also be kind of terrifying. We'll have noticed that the first thing John the seer learns in Revelation chapter seven, the first thing he learns about the great multitude from every nation standing and singing before the throne and the lamb, as he's in conversation with the heavenly elder, the first thing he learns is that they have come out of the great ordeal great tribulation. Now what has formed them as worshipers and as servants is suffering. That their faith has gone through the fire. That they know firsthand the pressure to compromise, the threat of oppression, the pain of injustice. Now we could read Revelation and say, well, that multitude is probably supposed to represent one unlucky subgroup. Large, sure, diverse, of course, but not everyone, not all Christians, not the whole church. Maybe so, even if unlikely. But then we hear Jesus in Matthew chapter 5. We hear Jesus speaking even more directly to his disciples, to all Christ followers about what they can expect in this world. Distress, disappointment, power struggles, violence, slandering and maligning. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are those who mourn. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake. Blessed are you when people utter evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, Jesus teaches, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Are those supposed to be the letters that spell out holiness in our time? Is that what the life of a saint, the life of a saint in training has to be like? Well, at the very least, to be a saint is to be prepared and to be preparing for that sort of hardship because of the name of Christ. To be a saint is to be developing the kind of depth, the kind of solidity of believing and obeying that won't get blown away in the first or the last storm wind of maltreatment and hostility. To be a saint, to be in the communion of saints is to learn from those who learned themselves that walking in step with the spirit means walking out of step with the world, walking out of step with the world, the flesh and the devil. And that those powers are not prone. They're not patient to let such defiance go unpunished. But preparing for trouble on Jesus account preparing for trouble as part of becoming saints isn't quite the same as stocking up on canned food and batteries and first aid supplies in case of a fire or an earthquake. 
And that's because even though I said earlier that sainthood, holiness, is the one thing that everyone has an interest in, in the sense that in God's providence, it's everyone's secret purpose and goal, we would miss pretty badly if we made sainthood, like various people make politics and science and culture, our special focus. If we made it the thing we concentrate on, and since it seems to be about us, something that would we, we, we would surely try to exploit and control as if it were even in our power. That might be how would-be saints lose their way, but it's not how those named and called by God become the saints they're meant to be. What we've been given to do instead, realizing our sainthood on All Saints Day, is what the multitude in Revelation chapter 7 does. Standing before the throne and before the Lamb, they cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who is seated on the throne and to the Lamb. And, the elder tells John, as every creature was created to do and will get to do in the holy city, they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter. What we've been given to do, realizing our sainthood on All Saints Day, it's what Jesus commands in Matthew chapter 5. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is not their own, but theirs is the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst, not after treasures or greatness for themselves, but who hunger and thirst after righteousness, God's righteousness for they will be filled. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see not their own purity, not their own holiness, but they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called, not deserving of prizes or honor in their own right, but they will be called the children of God. With all the saints, and this is also why we can thank God as we have for those who have gone before us. With all the saints, our first and final interest, however we're voting, whenever we'll be able to meet in person again, whatever the days to come bring, whether expected or astonishing, whether easy or hard, our first and final interest is God who has given himself to be heard by us and to be known by us and to be loved by us in Jesus and who pours out his Holy Spirit that we may come to reflect his holiness, not by looking at ourselves, but by praising and obeying and seeking him. We're being given, we have been given a taste of the kingdom. How terrific and what a mercy that we're in such good company. Thanks be to God.